The righteous are as bold as a lion. The world needs a bold church and you are that church and your voice matters. I'm Amy Schaefer. It's Hope Today. I'm here with Sydney and with Angela. Angela, I can't wait to dive in talking about being bold. Oh yes, girl, listen, if today you long to be a voice for God, but don't know what to say or how to say it, you don't wanna miss today's interview. In a world with an abundance of noise, voices, opinions, and agendas, God's voice of righteousness, truth, goodness, and power must be the loudest, and he wants to use you. Pastor and revivalist Miles Rutherford will join and compel us today to get up with boldness raise our voices and watch God's outpouring flood the world. I'm excited for this fireball. <laughs> I'm super excited to have this conversation because it is so important now in this day of age. I just think that Jesus is the way, the truth and the light. And you know, a lot of people talk about my truth. This is my truth or their truth. No, we have to have our truth only in Jesus. You know, we're all called to a sphere of influence, whether it's your family, your community, your neighborhood, wherever God has called you to, now is the time for us to raise our voices, to speak with boldness and to have that truth in Jesus. Because you know what, the world is dark, but we are called to be the lighting. Well, and for those who are afraid to raise their voice, thinking that you might be the only voice, <laughs> am I the only one that sees this? Am I the only one that's gonna say anything? I wanna say to you that there there is a remnant in the land and that you are not alone. We are not alone. This can't be all of you and none of us. And she says everything. I don't, this is all of us together, collectively raising our voice to speak truth in a time of great darkness and to be the light and to be the salt of the earth. It really does take all of us. You know, that's why the Lord created a diversity of people and a diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. So if you're watching today and as you listen to this interview, we want to encourage you to find your voice, to listen keenly and ask of the Lord, where would you have me to speak up? You know, I think that there are so many places within the body and within the world that we see these huge gaps where people, if we just had their voice, we would be elevated to a new place of glory in him. You know, I think it's just talking about like finding your voice and knowing your voice, listening to the Holy Spirit is so paramount. You know, I just think about something recently, you know, that I was going to the gym, I was coming out and there was this man, he was playing the violin and it was so beautiful. And I was on my way to Marshall's and God like stopped me and he said, I want you to go pray for him. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go up to this man, and, you know, pray for him. And he was just sharing how he's from Romania and that he's having a really hard time. And we like, this is the way that he supports his family. And I just think it's so important when we talk about, you know, our voice and having that boldness, we have to be willing to be interrupted by the mm -hmm. gospel. So we just want to encourage you today. Are you willing to be interrupted? Are you willing to listen to the still small voice and to be able to go into those places and talk to people? Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but it is so necessary, Amy, that we listen, that we can be that voice of truth and love Well, for you someone. mentioned Marshalls yeah. and my, I just went, yes, Marshall. <laughs> my mom was running errands with me one day and she, she goes, Amy, you have a circle. And I was like, I do, I have a circle. And I think we each have a circle of places we go, people we meet, people that we're running into. They're like, hey, Amy, you know, especially at the stores. So Angela, today's the time to be bold and to use our voice. Absolutely, no matter where we are in this journey, God is looking to use us. Anytime God looked to accomplish something great in the earth, he assembled a remnant of people who weren't afraid to stand up and stand on his word. Author, pastor, and revivalist Miles Rutherford prophetically declares we are living in such a moment again. In his new book, Raise Your Voice, an urgent call to speak out in a collapsing culture, Miles shares what he believes is needed in this hour and how you play a vital role. After all, as Miles states, every single thing we see in this world is the product of a voice, first God's, then yours. Miles, welcome to Hope Today. Hey, thank you guys for having me so much. I feel like you guys have already read the book and already saying everything I need to say. I love it. I believe we're all together going to do some great things in this season. There's a lot of hope definitely for the church today. 
There really is. And I think through powerful voices like yours and this wonderful book that you've provided, it is calling us to a, a remnant, to arise and to be his voice. So, Miles, just off the top here, what caused you to write this book and why now? Um, well, two, two reasons. Number one, the silence of the church. Number two, the lawlessness of the culture that we're living in. Um, one of the greatest persecutions that the church will experience in the last days, um, Paul speaks about it. He says these words. He says, uh, do not neglect the gathering together as you see the day approaching where the, where the new or the early church had persecution that scattered them according to Acts 8. It says in the last days, this kind of persecution will actually cause us to gather. And I've seen a lot of people where we should have been gathering, you know, COVID was so such a huge pandemic. It was such a plague, but I also believe it, it actually purged the church. It purged the church of voices that were just not um, wanting to be bold. And right now, uh, one of the things that really just set me off in the spirit was when Roe versus Wade showed up and um, what should have been a celebration on social media of great ministries all around the nation. It just was silence. And I just started noticing, goodness, we, we're not we're not speaking for the Lord. And one of the reasons why is because we are politicizing sin, where as preachers, we're called to polarize sin. We're called to uh, differentiate. And, um, so I've seen that in the church and then the lawlessness, there's definitely a ramping of lawlessness that is happening in the nations and especially America, uh, in whole. And when you do the sliding scale of 1945 to 2023, as we can talk about it if, here in a minute, if you want to, you will see that we're 26 years left from a godless society, unless and this is the hope, unless a remnant raises the voice. And uh, like I believe it was Amy that just said, uh, we're not, there's, we're not alone. There are a lot of people. We're not Elijah. We're not in a cave. Uh, I alone am left. God has reserved 7,000. And so I, I wrote this book for the remnant. It's not a church growth book. It's a remnant growth book. And so that was the purpose of my writing it. So you mentioned that, you know, it's this remnant that's rising and that we really need to be those who raise our voice. What can we do even today to begin that movement towards raising our voice? What does it look like? Well, number one, social media. Everything that we see uh, here, the Generation Z that is now at 18% living for God, that's, that's astoundingly low. Uh, that even are challenged to go to church, where in my generation it was like 50-some percent. Um, we have to engage, just like we're doing here, just like you all are doing. Find creative ways. Now, if you don't have a television station or a social media platform, um, one of the greatest things you can do is get on there and start raising your voice. Start speaking what the Lord speaks um, and bring truth. I believe it was one of the host, I don't know which one said it, but truth, I'm Sydney or somebody, tr truth is what needs to be heralded and it will offend. But you know, the Bible says, even Jesus said, blessed are you if they revile and persecute against you. And so raising your voice, um, it can be just to social media. It can be showing up at the school board meetings. It, it could be showing up in different avenues of society and just being a voice. And yes, you will have to brace for people to disagree with you. But I mean, what, what are we concerned about? Offending them or offending God? And so right now, God is raising up a group of bold people mm -hmm. in every facet of life to raise truth. And, and last, but, but certainly not least, if you're a mother or a father, especially, speak truth into your children, not the suppressing of it, not the altered version of it. Um, preach the unadulterated truth to them. Raise them up because there is a generation strong and mighty. And I, again, I just believe there's hope. I, I, I don't, God always has a remnant. Uh, Miles, I am a pastor of a church here in Pittsburgh, my husband and I, and we, we aggressively watch other bold churches across the country and 
yours we have been watching for a while. You did something in the month of June that was so bold and you raised your voice. And you know, a lot of times as Christians, we say we, we want to take back the rainbow. It's, it's God's, God's covenant to man. And you bought billboards in Atlanta. I mean, that was a big, bold move. And you had a whole campaign called Proud to be Delivered. So, you know, while people are talking about raising their voice and stepping out, I mean, I mean to me, you gave the devil a punch in the throat. So where did that come from? Like, take us through that, that process and the, the victory maybe you even saw through it. Well, in 2019, I was in my closet, ironically, and um, I began to weep. And my wife came into the closet and she said, what's wrong with you? And, and I said, Delana, God is, and I, I have a hard time talking about this because I get weepy because I remember the moment so strong. Mm -hmm. He came in my, in my closet and he said, he told me, he said, I'm going to have you speak concerning some things that people aren't going to like. And I began to weep and, 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 and I said, ba baby, there's a burden on me that um, is extremely strong. And I know right now in this moment, if I say no, God will never ask me again. And I have to say yes to this. That was in 2019. And that burden, part of that burden was the LGBTQ because I've never struggled with this. And a lot of people, you know, especially when you call this out and, and you stay strong on it, people will think that. But Jesus didn't struggle with anything, but yet he called so many sins out. But there's a burden, and you need to have the burden. Um, the church needs to have the burden for the LGBTQ community. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't want to intermingle too much or make the timeline here, um, you know, as far as dating this. But even today, right now, uh, there is a pastor here in the Atlanta area, a large mega pastor, who's having a conference of inclusion for the LGBTQ. Um, and if I said his name, y'all would know him. Yeah. Um, so we're living in a time right now where we need people to speak concerning these things. And God believe that's why God tapped my wife and I. Mm -hmm. So in June, uh, fast forward to June 2023, the Lord really prompted us. I want you to put out seven billboards and set it to a rainbow backdrop. And so we did. We set it to a rainbow backdrop, seven color, not six. Um, immediately upon putting it up, we put the words proud to be delivered on the front of it. And so when people drove by in hot spots and we put them in areas where people are actively in LGBTQ lifestyles and um, they would go to the proud to be delivered dot com website and they would read people that are in our church over the last few years that have been delivered from uh, any of those lifestyles and sharing their testimonies. And so what they got was, it wasn't that we were anti-LGBTQ, they read it and realized we were anti-sin. Uh, we, obviously we don't condone that lifestyle, but uh, a lot of right now, what God is, is doing is waking up some people in the LGBTQ, you know, God can take Saul and turn him into Paul. And if we can believe that, then God can take somebody who's living that alternative lifestyle turn them over and extremely use that woman or that man to do amazing things. Um, and so we've seen 1.5 million people go to the website, go to the social media platforms, look at these people started flooding into our church, people that needed deliverance. They're still there. People have gotten delivered from that lifestyle, living out. We're discipling them, training them, preaching to them, walking alongside of them. But during that time, the, the gay lesbian, Against affirmation or against defamation, rose their voice up and said, "Hey, this is a bait and switch. They've taken the pride flag and they've put it on the billboard, and and uh, they're telling us that it's a bait and switch." And I I get, I began to make a you know we made a, a comment on our proudtobedeliver.com. Listen, the the rainbow, the first bait and switch was the rainbow, was God's rainbow, and the LGBTQ agenda took the rainbow and put it on uh, banners that they now call pride flags. And I uh, said, this is God's sign. And so 20 days in, the, the billboard company, uh, I guess, was being threatened by them to be sued. They took it down 21 days in. 
all seven billboards. We left, they left one that they couldn't get to, but pretty much took them all down. But every outlet in this area and national uh, showed up. And really what it did was actually, it actually caused the trumpet to be sounded that there is a church in Atlanta that is actually helping people get out of the lifestyle, not just preaching against it. And my wife and I are called in this area to really, there's a principality in this area and we just wounded him. And you know, hey, there's a warfare that's attached to it, but uh, we're fighting it and we're seeing massive results. That is such a powerful testimony. I love what you all went after and just obeying the voice of God in such a direct way, you know, and we all need to do that. How would you suggest the one who's watching today, how can they find their voice amongst the noise of this culture? The, number one, you got to pray to the Holy Spirit. I, I actually on raiseyourvoicebook.net, um, they can go to that website and I give them five ways they can raise their voice. But the number one thing is you have to do this by the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. Elijah couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself didn't start his ministry. And, and Jesus did a lot of name calling. He did it mostly to the religious folk. They, he could not do it with the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm your example. I'm your savior, but I'm, I'm also your example. Greater things will you do. People think the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so that they can only speak in tongues or run or shout and jump and dance. Uh, we, we learned that that is just completely the exact uh, not exact opposite, but definitely not the fulfillment of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's for you to have a power to witness, to share your voice, to testify. So number one, and I think the greatest thing is to get with the Holy Spirit. Find a place, ask the Lord what you're supposed to speak about. And number two, engage, engage in culture, engage in this warfare. We cannot be silent. Silence does not work. Silence, honestly, can represent compliance. And um, a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I don't practice these certain lifestyles or do this or that, but you know, let people be, let them, let them have, but well, Romans 132 says you may not practice them, but if you approve of them, you're just as in the same situation of eternal damnation. And that's the Bible. And, and I don't get to rewrite it. Um, I can only interpret it. And that's what that, that, that word says. So raise your voice, don't be compliant. And the more you're compliant, the more the new norm will be pushed and raise your, raise your voice up for the sake of your children. Think about in your mind, why am I raising my voice? Not just to make my life comfortable, but Psalms 145 says, and one generation will praise the works of the Lord and declare them. And that word declare means to authorize them to the next generation. So if we're going to see this next generation raise up with power and might and be prophets and apostles and evangelists and preachers and teachers, then we have to do our part in this generation. So those are the things that I, I feel like need to be the bedrocks of how and why we raise our voice. Get a different perspective of who you are. We are preachers. The preachers aren't people holding a mic on the uh, stage on Sundays. The Bible says that preaching follows salvation, not ordination. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. I love the fivefold ministry. I'm one of them. But we, we tend to believe that we're going to hear somebody else raise their voice when God has called every single one of us to preach. And that word preach is not just evangelize. That word preach is caruso, which simply means to, as a man stands on a street corner and is eternal and speaks from an eternal conviction as a town crier. We're all called, whatever our street corner is, whether it be our house or an actual street corner, we're all called to raise our voice. So that perspective needs to change. That is so good, Miles. You know, a hashtag you use all the time on social media is preacher, preach on. And that is such yes. an important message that it's not just the fivefold ministry, but it's all of us that are called to go into the world. I have a, a question. What happens, what's at stake if we don't raise our voice? Our children. Our children will eat the fruit of our strength or the fruit of our silence. We are 26 years away from a godless society. 1945, 76% of the people serve the Lord with all their heart in America. In 2021, 24% serve the Lord. They actually, 76%, according to an ABC poll in San Diego, actually affirmed the LGBTQ lifestyle and is okay with it. And we need to move forward and we need to include this. 
that tells me that the same, the, the God that never changes has somehow changed. And so if you do the sliding scale to that, you will find that in, in 26 years, actually 25 years, because we just turned a year over on the Hebrew calendar, um, in 25 years, there will be, a, there will be not, this God that we, we talk about today, it will not be talked about. And if, you, if people think, well, that's crazy. Well, I have a friend in Manchester, England right now that they, they're gone there to be a witness. And they told me, they said, right now, Miles, 2.8% of this city we live in actually even know who God is 2.8%. We bring up the name of Jesus. They don't even know their kids don't know the name of Jesus. They don't know God. And, uh, we're in a very strong culture war. You look at the world economic forum. You look at the AI wanting to rewrite the Bible. China is not the only people trying to rewrite the Bible, artificial intelligence, the world economic forum, all these things want to rewrite the Bible. And I know it sounds like a lot of doom and gloom, but the lot, the Bible says in the last days, Joel two, that there would be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And that's where we are right now. Matthew 24 and Joel 2 are colliding. There are showdowns in the culture and the, and the church. And the church will experience an outpouring. That's the hope. If the remnant rises and the remnant begins to speak out, you're going to see one of the greatest outpourings over the next six years. I believe that with all my heart, all the way to 2030, I believe God's going to really touch the church and outpouring. So I, I don't write this book as a doom and gloom book. I write it as an open your eyes because there is a massive, massive revival that is beginning right now. I believe it's happening right now as we speak. Come on, Miles. Would yes. you take just a moment and pray into that very thing for us today? I sure can. Father, I declare right now, according to your word in Joel 2, 24, all the way through 30, and we're here we are in the year 2024 to 2030, six scriptures about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You said upon your sons, upon your daughters, upon your men servants, your maid servants, all of us, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I thank you, God, that they will, that when they read this book, God, I just declare that they won't just see the Matthew 24, the lawlessness and the things ramping up, but God, they will feel an anointing upon them that their, their cities can be saved, that their, their, their schools can be saved, that everywhere that they speak up and raise their voice, that God, you will use them as a tool God, I thank you for putting an anointing on the people of God, on the church, on the remnant of God to speak out, speak up. And that, God, you said in your word, Isaiah 60, that if we, if we arise and shine, that, Lord, you will arise over us. So, Father, as we get up, you get up. God, give the strength to the church, not just to wake up, but to get up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Miles, thank you so much for joining us today on Hope Today. Thank you for having me. Just as like we were just listening to Miles and what he was sharing and saying, the one thing I just kept on hearing God saying over and over and over again is return unto me. I truly believe that we are in a season, just as you heard Miles refer, and we've talked about this many times on the show, that we are in a new Hebrew year, the Hebrew year of 5784, the year of the open door, the year of breakthrough. We've hear all these things, hearing these prophetic words about, you know, seven years into 2030. God is really drawing us to a place where I feel like it is a place of consecration. It's a place for us to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get all woo, 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 excited, but I think it's a time where God's like, reverence me, yeah, be in on. awe of me. How many times are you on your knees and really reverencing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? The Bible says that he only like reveals things to those who fear him. And so today, as we've had this conversation with Miles, we just want to encourage you today to take a moment, even if it's right now, or even if as we're closing after the show, to make an altar, to make a place where you lay your life down before Jesus. Lay your life down before Jesus. Repent of your sin, repent of your ways, and ask God today, how do you want me to use my voice? Because a lot of times I think in the church, we like all this encouragement, there's persecution coming, but we are called to this. You know, like, like I have a dear friend that right now she's in the Middle East and she felt God called her there and she's in an undisclosed location and she is prepared to lay her life down yes. for the gospel yes. and to look face to face with my friend mm -hmm. that says, I know that I'm called to be a martyr. Mm -hmm. How much more, are we ready for that? Mm -hmm. Are we ready? So we just want you today, return unto him. Be in awe and a fear of the Lord.
there is a remnant all over the world. My husband too just returned from the Middle East and from Egypt and and he met a a Catholic priest mm -hmm. who is who has baptized 8 thousand men in the middle of the night to avoid the Muslim Brotherhood. Come on. I'm telling you, like, this is your time. And honestly, the, like Sydney was talking, the, are you going to fear God? Or are you going to fear man? Yeah. And if we're in fear of man, we'll never be able to be bold and to step out and to be those people like, we're like, we're like, should be on fire on yes. the earth. We should be so passionate about our our Christ, our Savior, our Lord. He, he changed our life. He wrecked us for good. He, he made everything right. He made us right with God. There should be something in us, Angela, that like, I can't keep it in. I, yes. I can't keep it to myself. I've got to spread the fire. Yes, like fire shut up in our bones that we release it into the earth, that all of the world would be set ablaze for him. You know, I love this conversation with Pastor Miles and this conviction to arise, to stand up, to get up and to raise your voice. Today, no matter where you are, even as Sydney said, no matter what platform or influence you have, God is asking you to be his mouthpiece. He's asking you to be the deliverer of truth, of gospel, of provision to a people who are in dire need. Take a hold of his promise. Say yes to his ask and watch him do exceedingly more. I think today all of us could surrender more and all of us could do a little bit more with our voice. We surely can. And so if you're here in Pittsburgh, if you're watching us in Atlanta, Jacksonville, Montgomery, Alabama, anywhere across the country, even around the world, because we know we have viewers that are on YouTube. This is the moment for us to be the remnant, to rise up and to shine like never before. As the world continues to get darker, let us be the light, Amy. There is a remnant in the land and guess what? You're it, you're the remnant in the land. So step up to the plate, be bold, the righteous are as bold as a lion. You can do it. Go to your work. Go to the school. Go to the kids' soccer. Do, and, and be the light. Be the salt. Don't be afraid. Don't back down. Don't shut up, let up, or back up. We need the gospel and the good news and hope to spread like fire on the earth. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope Today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover one man's journey of overcoming addiction and finding purpose. Author Michael J. Hale shares his story of how he was saved from the clutches of addiction and what it took for God to turn his life around. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.